And I'm talking about the undecided voter. Are you kidding me? I mean, are you kidding me? The same people you see at the ice cream shop asking for 12 mini spoon samples. <laughs> it's a $3 cone, asshole. You don't see a difference <laughs> between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. What the f is left for you to learn about them? How they load a dishwasher? <laughs> Nobody has ever thought Wait, is that a Trump quote or a Harris quote? The people who take the 12 samples at the ice cream shop, they are, they they're, are they're bad people. They're the worst people. They are. It, yeah. it, it's true. But, I mean, is that the same situation that we're in right now with undecided voters? No, I think with undecideds, I, I think it is very easy, especially for comedians, no offense, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's easy, it's easy, fair to say, like, what are you doing at this point? Like, it's quite obvious that there's two different sides. But I think... The thing about Americans is not caring about politics doesn't mean politics doesn't affect you. It means you can affect it. And there's a lot of people that were taught in this country to not talk about things like politics and religion. So they don't understand and they don't know and they're afraid to make a mistake. So I think we have to take undecideds, even this close to the election, in good faith and say, okay, if you really don't know who you're gonna vote for right now, let's pick a couple issues that really matter to you. The Affordable Care Act, do you want your pre-existing condition to be uninsurable under one president, or do you want it protected under another? Do you want the right to the government to make decisions over people's bodies, or do you think that that is not the government's job and people should have their own decisions over their own bodies? These are major issues, and if you only pick one of them, you would know which candidate to vote for. Or maybe go to some of the that you trust who really does pay attention to politics talk to them or maybe ask yourself maybe they're not even sure if they're even going to leave their house sure. I, I mean i suspect that that's issue. part of what's Abby, going on here that, like these voters are they're they're just ambivalent right. maybe i'm and guessing in polling, what it, we see is and, and to the issue point i'm not taking anything away from my sister on the issues but we're 18 days out and what we see in all these races that we're working in across the country the problem for kamala harris is not persuading people to come from trump to her it's persuading them to turn out to your point that's the problem and as you said earlier mostly that's people under the age of 35. they just don't show up at regular rates because they are like every other like i was when i was 28 voting wasn't my top priority and so it just happens like that. And so that's the real problem is the turnout, not the persuasion. Every year, the Annan Bruce Center surveys the American public on very basic civics questions. And the answers and the percentages in Americans who know basic facts. Which party controls the Senate? Which party controls? I know it's close, but most people can figure this out. Everyone at this table, everyone in this room operates in a bubble, a bubble of following the news, following politics, and knowing this stuff. There are Americans who cannot name a Supreme Court justice, right. never mind any, you know, nine of the Supreme Court justices. And this is after Ruth Bader Ginsburg had the kind of marketing we usually associate with a Marvel movie of every possible <laughs> mug and chitch, you know, shopping bags, and all that stuff, yeah. you know? So when you think, oh, how can these people, these people don't think about politics at all. These people don't follow the news. They don't read a newspaper. They're not watching CNN. Probably would do them some good. They probably, if you're out there, keep stay, keep the channel here. Um, but really, they're dealing with a knowledge base that it just never seems that important to their lives. Now, you can make the case that it does matter, but generally, they tend to recognize that six months after the election. Well, here's, the thing. Here's, here's what I'll say. And, and this is going to sound like a shameless plug, but I literally wrote a best-selling book this year that started with American civics because most people don't know that. And I didn't want them to feel bad about that. So it's 20 pages of like, this is how it works. And this is what the Senate does and that kind of thing. But I think at this point, this close to the election, I think these people need to ask themselves if they're willing to take the risk that Donald Trump's vice president is right about him, that Donald Trump's newest vice president, J.D. Vance, who called him America's Hitler at one point, is right. They're willing to take the risk that Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney and all these people that are going against their own party are right. You know, they need to decide if they're willing to take the and risk and, point, and not vote. Is that these folks aren't even thinking about that at all. So how do we inspire them to? And I, th I think the issue that decided voters make, the mistake decided voters make is assuming that undecided voters are as invested or have the same level of, I don't want to say intelligence, I don't want to call them all dumb, but two-thirds of this country does not have a college degree. So you cannot assume everybody is going to look at the, the smaller minutia because they work in 50 hours a week. I'm not saying what you're saying is not important. It's very important. But the average American wants to come home and watch a reality show and go to sleep. And that's why you see the candidates going on podcasts because that's where those voters actually go and get information. So, yeah... 
you might have to go on a podcast with a weird person that you wouldn't have gone in four years ago. And a lot of these voters, I mean, when we do talk to some of these voters, I mean, I think they consider themselves to be open-minded. Yeah. yeah. You know, 12% right now say that they are persuadable. So maybe they're just so open-minded that they're taking all of the things into consideration for as long as possible. Uh, but given that Donald Trump, I don't think there's a human being on this planet who is more known than, than Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. In the 2016 it is... cycle, he started with 99% name recognition, which I mean, is something I... no candidate ever yeah. has, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, if, if he was 99 in, tw in 2016, can he be yeah, over 100 at this point? He said January 6th was a peaceful gathering. Ashley Babbitt died. Nobody died. That's yeah, literally a sentence completely out of his false. mouth. Yeah. So you still, uh, I don't know. Well, then that's the type, that's why you have to pander. That's why you have to get a rapper and Kid Rock and Meg the Stallion to come out on a stage because that's literally how some people are going to connect the but dots. I also wonder if among that 12%, <clears throat> how many of them, maybe they participated once, maybe they tuned into politics and they thought, you know, my life hasn't gotten better. I'm not making more money. I'm living in a community that's impoverished. Doesn't matter if Democrats are in control or Republicans are in control. I don't really see anything tangible that I can immediately grab that's changed. I think that is a mindset among some within that 12%. So, so maybe there is some ambivalence, or maybe some are saying it doesn't matter who I vote for, my life's not going to improve regardless that's of who's the running but, the country. But, but do you think that's... I, I feel like those are two different voting blocks, though. You have people who just don't believe in the system at all, and then you have people going, hmm, I don't know which ice cream I'm going to decide. It's like yeah, you've been in the store. Like to no, but that's why I think we need to be responsible for our people, right? Like, if you are a voter, if you are someone that's going to go vote in this election, go out and talk to someone, your friend, your hairdresser, the person at the grocery store, and ask them if they're going to vote. Because at this point, we need to have those conversations at our dining room tables, at our salons, at our friendships, you know, and say, are yeah. you going to vote and who are you going to vote for and what's your plan to vote? All that would three, be a good all idea. All three of y'all right. All three of you are right. When you run a campaign today, and I'm hired to win elections. Mm -hmm. I'm not hired to make friends or to be smart on TV. I'm hired <laughs> to win elections. And we take these voters like this and we segment them out. And we segment them out and we start having conversations with them to decide whether that 12% is leaning one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Are they a man or woman? Have they ever voted before? Things that both parties do wrong, I think, is that if you don't have some kind of a voting history, we start eliminating talking to you over a long period of yeah. time. Yeah. So both parties start, there's a generation of people who've never really heard from either party. Mm -hmm. So they really start less and less, and you see this. The difference between what you said about Donald Trump having all that name idea is he was a known quantity. Whether they liked him or not, they thought he was a little crazy, they thought he was orange, whatever it was, they were like, oh, maybe he'll break something, to your point, mm -hmm. about that's why you saw all those folks show up to vote for him. Kamala Harris is trying to get a whole new group of people who've registered to vote and come of age under a Donald Trump who really don't like him. This is what's going on every day in a campaign. All right.